Welcome to this six minute video on linear quadratic and cubic patterns. The following table is very important. It should be learnt off. If the first difference is constant in a pattern, the pattern is linear. If the second difference is constant, it is a quadratic pattern. And if the third difference is constant, then we have a cubic pattern. The shape of these patterns should be learnt off. We should also know how to find A. We're going to look at an example now of a cubic pattern. Express the n term of the number pattern 1, 13, 51, 125, 247 as a cubic polynomial. But we'll write here the pattern first. And then we write out the first difference. The difference between 13 and minus 1 is 14. 51 and 13 is 38. And we get 74 and 122. And then we work out the second differences. Between 38 and 14 is 24. We get 36 and 48. And lastly, we work out the third differences. Between 36 and 24, we have 12. And again, we have 12 between 48 and 36. So in this example, we see that the third difference is constant, so we conclude from this that we have a cubic pattern. So what does this mean? If we consult the table, we see a cubic pattern means the third difference is 6a, and it follows this cubic pattern given here. Okay, so 6a is the third difference, which is 12, so it follows a must be 2. Cubic patterns, it follows that an cubed plus bn squared plus cn plus d is a cubic pattern. Now we know a is 2, so we could neaten this up to say that term n is equal to 2an cubed plus bn squared plus cn plus d. But we need to work out b, c and d. So what do we know? Well, we know that term 1 is minus 1. Term 2 is 13, and we also know that term 3 is 51. And we can use this information to generate three equations to find the three unknowns a, b, and c. So subbing in term 1, so term in 1 in for n, and we put 1 in for n, its value is minus 1. Okay, working this out, we end up with b plus c plus d is equal to minus 3. When we stick in 2 for n, the value of the term becomes 13. And this gives us that 4b plus 2c plus d is equal to 13 minus 16, which is minus 3. Lastly, when we sub in 3 for n, term 3 has a value of 51. Neating this up, uh, we get 9b plus 3c plus d is equal to 51 minus 54, which again is minus 3. So now we must solve these three simultaneous equations. Now I'm not going in how we do that uh, in detail here. It's assuming from the chapter in algebra that you know how to do this already. But if we look at it, if we subtract the first equation from the second, we get 3b plus c, the d's cancel out, equals 0. Then if we subtract the second equation from the third, this gives us that 5b plus c, and the d's cancel out, and this equals 0. So this gives us two more equations, this time just in b and c, so we should be able to solve these quick enough. We call these equations 4 and 5. Now, if we subtract 4 from equation 5, this gives us that 2b, the c's cancel out, equals 0, therefore b must be equal to 0. Now we sub this into 
equation four, and we see that three times zero plus c equals zero. So it follows that c is also equal to zero. And lastly, we sub these values into equation one above putting 0 in for b and for c, it gives us that d is equal to minus 3. So now we know what b, c and d is, so we should be able to write out our general term. So we're basing it on the formula that term n is equal to 2n cubed plus bn squared plus cn plus d, but now we know what b, c and d are. So our cubic expression is 2n cubed plus 0n squared plus 0n minus 3. Needing this up, this is 2n cubed minus 3. And that's what term n is equal to. OK, so let's just overview this question. To summarize, dealing with these questions, first we write out the first difference, second difference, and third difference until we meet a constant. Then we apply what we know from the table to work out what a is and then we generate simultaneous equations and we solve the simultaneous equations working out uh, b c and d and this gives us the general term thank you for watching i hope you found this useful